Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. I'm in beautiful San Francisco, California, and there are a lot of incredible historical and legendary seafood restaurants in San Francisco, as well as some seafood dishes such as chopino, just a gigantic bowl of smoldering chopino that were invented right here in San Francisco. So today we're gonna go on a legendary seafood tour of San Francisco. This is the oldest restaurant in San Francisco, the oldest restaurant in California. And I cannot wait to share these historical legendary restaurants with you and all of the seafood coming up in this video right now. Again, good morning from San Francisco, California. It is a cool, slightly cloudy day, but that's okay. It's gonna be a perfect day for eating seafood and some of the legendary restaurants of San Francisco. I also wanna say a big thank you to Visit California for sponsoring my trip here and for arranging our schedule. This morning, we're going first to a restaurant called the Swan Oyster Depot, which is probably the number one place I was looking forward to eating in all of San Francisco. Nice to meet you. Oh. Your own fresh big shrimp from a pork. Great, great. But really quickly before they open, a uh, chance to quickly share a little bit of history about the Swan Oyster Depot. It dates back before the turn of the 20th century and it was started originally by four Danish brothers. But the actual original location burnt down in 1906, but then it reopened this location in 1912 and it's been here ever since. In 1946, Tom Sansimino and the Sansimino family uh, took over the Swan Oyster Depot and they are still own and run and operate the Swan Oyster Depot along with his brothers and family. I love how they take so much pride, care, and so much passion in what they do, sourcing the best seafood and serving customers with such a positive, happy attitude. Oh, they're still setting up and they're still organizing everything, but man, first, uh, cured salmon, it's glistening, red served with capers and onions. Man, this is beautiful. Mm. Oh wow. Yeah, it just melts in your mouth. Like it literally turns to salmon oil on your tongue. And that San Francisco sourdough on the bottom. Mm. Oh wow. Oh, that's so good. Oh man. That is the bite to wake up to. I think so. Crab Louie. Crab Louie. Yes, sir. One of the main dishes that you have to get here is the crab louie, a dish that was invented on the west coast here in San Francisco, highlighting the Dungeness crabs fully de-shelled all over a bed of lettuce. I got the dressing on the side. The dressing is a, it's a very thick, very creamy looking dressing with some capers in it, I believe. This is my Gonna be my first time to ever try crab louis. Looks awesome. Nothing on here but shredded lettuce and all that crab, Dungeness crab. Mmm. Mmm. They are frying here. Oh wow. Just the sweet, natural, briny stringiness of that Dungeness crab with that bed of iceberg lettuce that just 
it, it's so refreshing and so crisp and so juicy. The dressing it does taste similar to a Thousand Island. Not, not too sweet, really thick, really creamy, really rich. And then their bread here is specifically incredible as well. I'm gonna take a... Mm. Oh, man. This bread is so good. So perfectly airy and bubbly and chewy with that pinch of sour fermentation. Some of the chowder. I'll sprinkle in some pepper. Mm. Oh man, that's a great chowder. Okay, yeah. sir. Thank you very much. So what we got here, we got three different types of oysters, okay? Two Humboldt Bay Kumamoto's. These are local California oysters. We got two Stellar Bay Gold Miyagi's from British Columbia. We got two Tamales Bay Miyagi's. These are also our locals. Caught about an hour north of here in Marin County, okay? Great. I'm gonna try some of that vinegar first. That's a clean tasting oyster. Vinegar is incredible. With the crunch of the onions finely chopped up in there, so perfectly balanced, not overpowering. Extraordinary. Okay, one more oyster. I gotta try that hot sauce. Some lemon. Their hot sauce. And I think I might add a dab of horseradish to this. Cannot go wrong with horseradish. I love horseradish. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh, that went up my nose. Oh, that's a real deal horseradish. Oh, the flavor of that, plus the hot sauce. That is extraordinary. Oh man, that horseradish is wonderful. Okay, let's move into the shrimp cocktail. Oh, so it's a combination of prawns. I think they call the big one prawns and then these little pink shrimp here. I'll try these little pink shrimp. These little shrimp have some of the best flavor. Mm. and just melt in your mouth. So sweet. Wow, that's delicious. Okay, we'll try the prawns next. Mm. Again, sweet, firm, man. Two totally different textures. The prawns are more, much more firm. The little guys, the little shrimp, are just melt in your mouth. Thank you very much. We got Sicilian sashimi, okay? We got scallops. We got salmon. We got yellowtail hamachi. We got California halibut, it's our local halibut. And then we got ahi tuna right here, okay guys? Okay, I'm gonna start with that. I believe that one is the hamachi yellowtail right here in the center. Mm. Mm. Oh wow. The natural freshness. Mm. That crunch of the onions and the capers. And then, actually, there's no salt or anything. On, I think they have some condiments you can season with. But man, when it's that fresh and that good, you don't need anything to cover up the freshness of it. This one here is the halibut. Mm. Totally different texture. That one just melts in your mouth. So pure, so silky. Try some of the ahi next, the tuna. Mm. And just that little bit of saltiness coming from the capers. The pureness of the ahi. Oh man, I can't put it down. We gotta try a row of everything. The salmon. Mm. Oh. oh, you feel the oils of the salmon. And then last one is the, the scallops. Slice. crackers in the soup? So sweet. And again, that just, oh man. 
just completely melts in your mouth. You don't even need to chew the scallop. Okay. Crab back. So this is just all the tamale and the It's all the, the guts head. and glory. Great. Rip the head off, absolutely. We've got the crab back, the Dungeness crab head filled with its own tamale and juices and, oh man, look at that. It's thick, it's rich, it's buttery. Mm. Oh man, that's insane. Oh, it's sweet with that bitterness to follow. It's creamy. Oh man, it's almost like yoki tasting. I love how it's served pudding style too. And we got some fresh cracked black pepper. Grab a, another bite. And I think I'll add a little scoop of hot sauce to this bite. I love how it's served pudding style. Mm. Oh man, that is extraordinary. The complexity of the flavor, the richness. Oh man, incredible. I love how everything is prepared in a way where you, I mean, it focuses on the quality, the freshness, and the, the natural taste of the seafood itself. Mm. Final bite of the sashimi. And so that completes our meal, an extraordinary meal at the Swan Oyster Depot. Even when I was leaving, I mean, they shake your hand, they say thank you for coming, and you can just feel the genuine friendliness, the delicious seafood that was so good. From here, we're going to the next restaurant where we are gonna eat another dish that was invented in San Francisco. classic Italian-American San Francisco seafood restaurant, an oysteria and seafoods. Welcome to Soto Mare. Back in the kitchen now with the chefs. They're making a variety of seafood, the pastas, but first he's gonna show me how they make their chopino. And again, chopino is one of the signature dishes of San Francisco, an Italian-American dish. Starts off with some oil, you smell the garlic in there, some green onions go in, that mixture of seafood. Oh man, smells so good. Fish stock. Okay. Fish stock goes in. Uh, gonna give you this. Once that seafood has cooked down a little bit, then he adds in some tomato sauce, adds in some fish stock, lets that simmer down. And then another thing, I just love how this restaurant is open. The, the kitchen is completely open to the dining room. So you can smell the aroma of the food. You can see the cooking as it happens before you eat. And the last dish we got is this pasta. Linguini seafood. Linguini pomodoro. With, pomodoro. with some mussels in there. Oh, nice. Uh, is it mostly mussels? Mussels, crumbs. It has everything. Oh, a mix of seafood. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, just one. Seafood. Mix of seafood, all right. And now it's a plant. Linguini okay. All the food is at the table. I think I've said this before, but any table, any restaurant that has paper towels on your table, that's automatically a good sign. You wanna be eating at a restaurant that serves paper towels on your table. I mean, the dish that you have to get among everything else here is the chopino. And really quickly, before we start digging in, we've gotta quickly talk about chopino and its history. It's a dish that was invented here in San Francisco. It's an Italian-American dish, and it has a very cool history. A lot of Italian immigrants 
came to San Francisco as fishers. They brought their fishing expertise from Italy to San Francisco and they harvested crabs, the Dungeness crabs, the, the fishing off the coast, the west coast of San Francisco. And so what would happen is the fishers were, would come together at the end of the day, after the end of maybe, maybe it wasn't the most successful fishing day, and they would all pull together what little remains of seafood that they had. And so they'd put that all together into one uh, pile, small pile of seafood. They'd boil it down into a, kind of like a soup or stew with tomatoes, maybe with some wine, maybe with some fish. And then they'd have a sharing meal all together. I, I mean, it's the ultimate example of sharing a meal together. And so that's how Chopino was invented in San Francisco. And I think that's important because we're gonna eat at least one, maybe, probably two or three bowls of Chopino. Not forgetting the crab bib. I'm just gonna try some of that soup first. Mm. Oh man, that's such a soothing tomato. You're not totally sure if it's a, it's kind of like the texture in between a soup and a sauce. You really taste the garlic in there, that hint of white wine the depth and complexity of the fish broth, as well as, all the, as, as well as all of those shellfish, the juices seeping out of them and just infusing into that beautiful sauce. Mm. Mm. Oh man, that is so warming, so comforting. I like the, the handful of parsley. Oh, the green onions in here. Mm. Oh, and you gotta be careful because it stays hot. Mm. Oh, the shrimp is really bouncy. And I like how, I mean, you can take a bite of seafood, you can chase with some of the tomato soup, or you can use this big spoon to just get tomato soup with every single bite. Oh, here's a clam, but filled with shrimp, and filled with tomato sauce, filled with, I think there's some little baby scallops in here too the ultimate dish of rehydration. Mm. Oh yeah, the clam is sweet. Mm. Yep, let's move on to the, the Dungeness crab. I'll, I'll submerge it. Okay. Oh, no, it's pretty, you can crack it with your teeth. It's not very strong. Oh, there we go. Crack, open that. Open that. Oh, did I splash you? <laughs> the spoon reducing technique. Mm. Mm. Dungeness crabs just never gets old. Again, for me, I love the, the texture of Dungeness crab. The, it's so stringy and silky, so sweet. And then I think the last seafood in here that we haven't tried, there might be some hiding seafood, but we haven't tried the squid yet. Man. Delicious. And another thing you can do is take a piece of bread. Are they two different types of bread? Oh no, I want the sourdough. This should be sourdough, I think. And then you can just dip up into the, the chopino. Mm. Yeah, just mop it up. It absorbs all of that delicious flavor. Okay, so next up for the steamers, uh, there's a combination of mussels and clams in here. So much garlic, some green onions, a sprinkle of parsley, and that sauce of uh, wine and probably lemon on the bottom there. Try one of these clams. Oh man, look how much garlic. I'm gonna scoop up some of that at the bottom as well. Mm. Wonderful the sweet complexity of the actual clam itself. White wine reduction, and then I love how much garlic they use. With every bite, I think you have to scoop down and fill your cup, fill your shell, and slurp it up. Mm. Those are sweet too. And then we got one more dish, which is the pasta. And again, it's a huge mix of seafood in here, almost like the chopino itself, just in pasta form. Mm. Again, the garlic, I love the tomato sauce. It's not too tart, but you taste the, like the chunkiness of it. Maybe the onions and some peppers uh, simmered down until they just kind of liquefy and do the tomato sauce. So 
so it has this lovely natural sweetness to it. And I do think that when you think about the history of Chopino, very good, yes. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. And I think knowing the history when you're eating it makes it even more special. From here to continue on with this legendary seafood tour of San Francisco, we're heading on to the next restaurant and we're definitely gonna have another bowl of Chopino. So in between meals, we stopped by what is definitely the most famous and the most iconic street in all of San Francisco, Lombard Street, where it just snakes its way down the mountain. Uh, the view from up here is beautiful, the flowers, the gardens. It's also a great place to get some exercise in between meals. Welcome to Anchor Oyster Bar. This is an extremely popular restaurant. We got here in the middle of the afternoon and luckily we got the last table. The main thing that you have to come here that this place is most well known for is again, their chopino. And I got the large size. Thank you. Boston clam chowder. Oh. That is like a perfectly creamy slightly buttery, full of clams, the starchiness of the potatoes. Oh man, that is a chowder right there. But I know what would make it better. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ying. And that's a nice coarse grind, the way I love it. Stir that in. Mm. Sometimes chowder can be almost goopy. This one is. Thick, but not goopy. Caesar salad. Creamy and cheesy. The oysters are here. I think there's actually three different types of oysters on this tray, on this dozen tray of oysters. But look at these. I've never seen, I've never had an oyster like this with really, look at that exterior shell that's really ribbed. Purest way to eat an oyster. I mean, apart from just the oyster itself is just with a squeeze of lemon. Wow, that's briny, that melts in your mouth. Wow, that's a, a beautiful seafood flavor. And for this one, I'll go horseradish and cocktail sauce. Mm. Mm. Wow, totally different flavor from the other one. This one has a hint of a bitterness to it, along with a sweet finish. Last type of oyster, and these are probably the biggest ones on the tray. I'll go in with this one with a little bit of that vinegar. Mm. Mm. Oh, that vinegar is nice. I think that's the apple cider vinegar, so it has this sour, yet sweet, slightly fruitiness all at the same time. Thank you. Oh yeah. All right. Thank you very much. So here we go. Just a gigantic bowl of smoldering chopino. Thank you very much. Oh yes. Okay. Even got a catcher. Just in case you drop a piece of crab, it will it will catch it in your bib, and then you can re-eat it. And as I dig into that broth, I can smell almost a almost a licorice aroma to anise seed in here too? Or could that be coming from some of the herbs in there? The greatest pool, the greatest bowl of seafood that you could possibly eat in San Francisco. And it's what you want to be eating when it's cloudy, when it's drizzly outside in San Francisco. I just have to try some of that tomato sauce first. Loaded with herbs, you can smell the garlic in there and those spices. Mm. Mm. Oh man. The vibrancy of the tomatoiness 
the herbs, that oregano, parsley, that hint of sweet bitterness from the shellfish in a very good kind of way. That's contrasting the tartness of the tomato sauce. One of the great things about chopino is again, the ultimate in reducing. Wow, that one is so hot actually. Okay, I'm gonna skip that one and I'm gonna go to muscle. The ultimate in reducing techniques you could possibly have. Mm. Mm. Again, just the broth, that seafoody tomato herbal broth. Now the clam should be cool enough. Oh yeah, okay, we're good. Redip. Submerge, you wanna submerge every single bite. Mm. Oh yeah. Clam actually has a totally different texture than the mussel. The mussel is smoother, softer. Clam is a little more chewy, a little more elastic-y. Oh, such good flavor from that clam. And I think I'm ready to try that garlic bread. Man, everything has to be dipped. I will not take a bite without it being fully dipped and submerged. Mm. Yeah, buttery, herbaceous, and crispy. And then another option is to just Rehydrate with a spoon to pour over the pour over technique. I'll try that shrimp next. Oh, that's pretty big. That's pretty meaty. Mm. Now that is a muscular shrimp. You can feel the the tightening of the muscle as you bite down, and then again, it's just absorbed that soup, that herbaceous heart tomatoiness. Restir just a little bit. Because um, I've heard that the bottom is some of the best. Be oh, yeah, there's even whole tomatoes in here. I've heard that the bottom is the best because all of the seafood juices accumulate. Um, okay, fish. Here's a big piece of fish right here. I'll try fish next. really firm meat fish. I'm not totally sure what type of fish that is. You know, it's very firm, um, like a like a cod or a halibut. Very firm, neutral tasting. Again, just or absorbing the tomato garlic herbs. I think the final seafood we have is the, the crab, the Dungeness, the famous San Francisco Dungeness crab. All bay leaves in here. Um, I'll grab this, the cloth. Rehydrate. Mm. Oh man, the crab is extraordinary. Yeah, it's so good. Mm. I mean, I think the thing about this massive bowl of chopino is, I mean, it's delicious, but it's also just so much fun to eat because you get to drink soup, drink that broth, eat a shellfish, crack some crab, get your fingers all tomatoey splatter on your shirt. Oh, here we go. That's a fully loaded mus mussel. There's some fish caught up in there. That's a perfect bite. I'm gonna just completely submerge, submerge and shot. Mm. And I think that's my first drizzle down the chin. Let's see what else we can dig up here. Oh, you know, we haven't tried the, the crab body. Mm. Oh yeah, you just gotta suck, you gotta... Oh, that's amazing because it's absorbed everything. So juicy. So much crab flavor. Yeah, that's, that is delicious. I'll do a dip of this and a chase with that. Oh yeah, your hands are guaranteed to smell like chopino for the rest of the day, and you're gonna be totally okay with that. Oh man, that was delicious. Ah. Oh, whoa, almost bumped over the table. Okay, we're moving on. 
finally to complete this historic seafood tour of San Francisco, we are going to what is, it's the oldest restaurant in San Fran, I mean, not only in San Francisco, but the oldest restaurant in all of California. One of the oldest restaurants in the United States. And we're going there next. So welcome to Tadich Grill since 1849. Classic restaurant, downtown San Francisco, known for their seafood. They have a cool history right here on the menu that says it. Uh, 1849, during the California Gold Rush, three Croatian immigrants began a business which later became the Tadic Grill. Very good, very well, good. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Once again, like I said, you're totally different from camera. I look different? I look different? No. Totally different. I look okay. more, more handsome. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You sit down, you immediately get a half a loaf of sourdough. I think it's sourdough. Look at that bread. Looks that crust, that inside. Look at that. Oh, man, that bread looks so good. Mm. Oh, that bread is so good. San Francisco sourdough. Mm. That texture, that flavor. Now I gotta figure out what to order, but um, we're definitely gonna get the sand dabs. That's one of the main dishes I wanted to try here. So what was your name again? Jose Maximilian. Jose Maximilian. Yes. Been here for 21 years. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> oh, so cool. My pleasure. And a young man. This is the famous Chimino. Chimino. Kevin Franz Alamanza. It's a Franz Alamanza. 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 Sand dab. And the sand dabs. Beautiful. This is the setup for the sand dab. Okay. Right yeah, beautiful. So, what we do is, I'm gonna sh just give you a little. Okay. Cuts up. This is what we do. Ah. You cut the edges first, like this. This is the method of eating it. Yes. And I hit them like about three times. Okay. And then you go right in between. <laughs> See? Oh, and the whole fillet pops up. And then the bone. Very nice. Come out. Yeah, I always nice. like to cut this a little belly on the side. Okay. And there you go. You put a little lemon, if you wish. Wow. And this is the tartar sauce, any kind of broiled fish. Okay. Enjoy, Perfect. please. Thank you very much. Thank you to Jose who is taking such great, great care of us. He's so friendly, so nice, great service. Uh, and I, I just love how they wear white coats. Man, it just fits the atmosphere perfect. The restaurant is packed now, and that's just a testament of their history and of the quality of food that they preserve here. The dish that I'm most looking forward to eating here, which are the sand dabs, which is a type of flatfish, uh, but these are small, like about, about hand-sized, let me just taste it with lemon first. Start with that tail end. Beautiful, oily. You can see the oily skin, the oily flesh of the fish. My first time to ever have sand dabs. Mm. Oh wow, yeah. Oh, that's delicious. Mm. Oily fish, a soft texture. You've got that deep fried crust on the outside. Man, that's just like oily and buttery in texture. Oh man, look how it's just so buttery, oily. The fish oils just juice out of it. It's so good and so flaky too. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. Okay, next dish, there's prawns in here. And Jose said there's a lot of paprika in here. Big, meaty shrimp. Oh, there's uh, crab meat. And then on the bottom is rice rice, crab, all baked like a casserole. Oh. Mm. oh, hot, very hot. Mm. A paprika seafood stew, all over rice, and then just kind of like baked together so it's hot, so it mingles all the ingredients all together. Mm. You taste the flavor of the paprika in there, which is not spicy, but so fragrant. 
and all that shredded crab meat in there. We had to try one more version of Chopino, the signature dish of San Francisco. I like how they pile the seafood high. I love, again, this is totally different from the other versions that we've had. It's more, the, the broth is more see-through. It's not as puree, not tomato puree, but there's chunks of tomato. There's lots of celery in here. I mean, this has been a tour where we've had some amazing Chopino and learned about the history of Chopino in San Francisco. And so, this is like bringing it all together in this historic dining destination, Tadich Grill. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. The seafood he brought, the fish in there. This one to me is lighter. And again, not as, you, yeah, it, it's, it's not the tomato puree as many other versions that you'll eat in San Francisco. This is more eats like a soup. Mm. Nothing overpowering, just the delicious taste of fresh seafood all in a, in a soup. Mm. Mm. So buttery, crispy. Oh, the garlic and the herbs on there. I love the heavy fish content but there are some shell shellfish. Here's a clam below here that's just fully loaded with, with the, the drippings of all the other seafood. I love their giant cut vegetables. Those kind of vegetables where you're not quite sure if you should take it in one bite or not. One bite. Very good. Uh-huh. Very good. Look at the size of this fry. You'll have a better comparison when it's up by my fish. That's what you call thick cut. It's like a one fry meal. Mmm. It's more like a roast potato. Squeeze that with lemon. Mm. Mm. This is the dish of the meal for me. Oh man. That buttery texture, that deep fried skin. Oh man. The oiliness. I think this is one of the, the cleanest versions of Chopino. And, I, and for me, it's really all about the fish in their Chopino. And as we continue to have dinner in here, the entire hall is packed. I love how it's so energetic. It's just buzzing. The waiters, the waitresses are just flying around in their white coats. Such a cool setting, atmosphere, and delicious seafood. With that amazing celebration of a meal at Tadich Grill, the oldest restaurant in California, that wraps up this incredible historic seafood tour of San Francisco. And then finally, again, I wanna say a big thank you to Visit California for sponsoring my trip to San Francisco and for arranging this tour. And also make sure we, we visited a couple different places with Visit California. We went to Santa Barbara, had an amazing trip, and then also to Napa Valley. So make sure you go back and you can watch all the rest of the videos as well. And so that's gonna be it again for this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe for lots more food and travel videos. Goodbye from San Francisco, California. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching.